This is the introductory video explaining how to analyze your sunspot data for the Astronomy 1100 Sunspots Lab. Now at this point your group should have a whole bunch of sunspot data taken over the course of many days. So our first question would be how are we supposed to make sense of all of this? Well to begin with what we're going to do is we're going to trace all of this data onto one page. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now as I said this was all taken on separate days so I'm going to get these in order. And then, as I mentioned, we're going to trace this all onto one page. So I'm going to take a blank sheet and I'm going to trace all of my data onto it. So I'm going to take the first day's data and in order to make this easy to trace, I'm going to turn on the overhead projector here just to give me some light. You can also use an outside window. Next, I'm going to line my blank sheet over top of this and for this first one, all I need to do is line up the circles, one on top of the other. And then I draw in my sunspots to the correct size. And I also want to draw in my drift arrow. Your lab instructor may or may not have asked you to draw in the north-south arrow. The drift arrow is the one you're going to need right now, however. It's also a good idea to label the day and time that you took this data. So in this case, June 26th at 9.48 a.m. So now, just to show you what that looks like, I've got just that one day's data on my blank sheet. So now, I bring in the next set of data. Now I have to do something just slightly different on this one. Again, I line up the two circles, but I also need to get the two drift arrows parallel to one another. So this one will be somewhere else on the page, but I want it to be parallel to this guy. And then again, I would draw in my sunspots, two size, and draw in my drift arrow. So this arrow is parallel to that one. And now I have my second set of data on there. And again, I'll label this with the day and the time that it was taken. June 28th at 10.14 a.m. And I'll repeat this with the next set of data. So I'm going to do four in total here. Again, line up the two circles, one on top of the other, but you also need to wriggle things around until the drift arrows are parallel to each other. So it looks parallel, then you draw in your sunspots to scale, draw in the drift arrow, and label when this data was taken. And I'll quickly do the last one. So again, you want the circles on top of each other, but you need the drift arrows to be parallel. So that drift arrow has to be parallel to all the others. So we're using the drift arrow to line up data from different sets of days, because the drift arrow shows us the east-west direction, and that allows us to orient the page correctly, even though the original data had the drift arrows pointing in all different directions. So for the next part of the analysis, I don't need to trace anything, so I'm going to turn off the overhead projector now. What you do next is you're going to draw a straight line to mark what one sunspot was doing on multiple days. So that's what I've done here, is I've got one sunspot that I can see on multiple days, and I drew a straight line through its entire path. Now depending on how accurately you took your data, you may find that your sunspots kind of fluctuate up and down around that line, do the best you can, however, to draw a straight line through them all. Some lab instructors will want you to draw a line for every sunspot that you can see on multiple days, so you'd have a second line across the page here. However, some lab instructors will ask that you just choose one sunspot and analyze only it. So clarify with your lab instructor which they prefer. I'm just going to analyze this large sunspot on multiple days, so I'm going to need only the one line. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a blank sheet of paper and we're going to lie it across that line that we just drew through our sunspots. And then we're going to use a compass and draw a half circle that has exactly the same diameter as this line. So if it's been a few years since you used a compass, it's one of these gizmos. So you would put this tip in the center of your line, adjust the other end to the edge of the circle, and then you draw a new half circle. Now I'll just let you know that the easiest way to actually make this all work is to take your ruler and measure the actual width of that straight line across the circle. So mine right here is 12.5 centimeters. Divide that by half, that would give me 6.25 centimeters. And then I'm going to mark 6.25 here. So that's the exact midpoint of this straight line that I drew across. And now I put the tip of the compass right there, and the pen goes right on the circle edge. And now I can hopefully draw a nice half circle with my compass. So like that. 
Now one thing that's not always obvious to students is this half circle that we just drew does not have the same diameter as the entire sun. So if our sunspots was up here, then that would be really obvious. We'd have a straight line across here, and the half circle that we drew would only be this wide. So the width of this half circle is only the diameter of the line, not the diameter of the entire sun. So we need to draw a few more things on here to analyze our data. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw lines straight down from each of our sunspot locations until it intersects this half circle that we drew. So let me demonstrate. As much as possible, I get my ruler 90 degrees to the edge of the page, and then I just draw a line straight down until I cross that half circle. And I'll do this for all of them. Try and get the ruler 90 degrees to the edge of the page, and then just draw a line straight down until it intersects the half circle. And again, for this one, try and get things 90 degrees and just draw a line straight down. And I'll do that for all four of them. Next, I'm going to want to draw lines from the midpoint of the half circle over to each of these intersections of the straight line with the half circle. So it's useful that I actually drew in my midpoint when I used my compass earlier. So I would draw a straight line from that midpoint over to where this line crosses the circle. And try and do this as accurately as you can. So from there to there, and then I'll do this for all four of them. So when I'm finished, I've got something that looks like this. And by the way, at this point, we don't actually need the data anymore. So I'm going to remove this, and we'll just look at the blue page. But one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to label, again, the days and the times that each of these sunspots was recorded on. So I've done that now. I've labeled this location with June 26, 948 AM, which is when that data point was taken, June 28, 1014, which is when that one was taken, and so on. And I'm going to actually draw little circles around here, just so it's very clear where all the intersections are. So I'm going to take just a moment here and try and explain what it is that we've drawn on this page here. We're basically mapping out the path that the sunspot would seem to take if we were standing on the north pole of the sun. In other words, this is the data we took on Earth. We saw the sunspots seem to progress across the face of the sun. What would it look like if we were standing up here, looking down, and watching that sunspot move? It would look like the sunspot was sweeping out a circle down below us. In other words, this is us standing at the North Pole, and this would be the path that the sunspot took. It would seem to be sweeping out a circle below us as it moved around the edge of the spherical sun. So that's why we've created this page here. Now this is the page that we're going to get measurements from. But first let me explain what it is we're trying to calculate in this experiment. We saw one sunspot seem to move across the face of the sun. The sunspot itself is probably not moving around much. It's just that the sun is rotating, and it's taking the sunspot along for the ride. So the purpose of this experiment, the reason why we took this sunspot data, is we're trying to calculate how fast the sun rotates. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze how big an angle there is between two consecutive measurements and how much time passed between them. Because if we get the angle and the time, we can calculate how fast the sun was rotating. So we'll do that now. First thing is we're going to take this protractor and we're going to measure the angle between these two lines. Now if you need a refresher on how to use these guys, what you do is you put the center point at this center point, and you line up the zero with one of your lines. So basically like this. Put the center point right in the midpoint of our half circle, line up the zero line with this line that I drew out radially, and then this other line marks the angle that I'm interested in. So this looks like it's about 51 degrees, so I'm going to write that down here. 51 degrees between this reading and this reading. Now I've got four pieces of data. That means I'm going to have three angles that I'll need to read, and also I'm going to calculate the time between them. So I'll have three angles and three times. So let me now measure the next one. Again, line up the center point with this center point, line up my zero line with this line, and then I'll read off my angle over here. And it looks like this is 43 degrees. And now I'll do the third one, line up the center with the center, line up the zero line 
with this line and then read off my angle here. So this looks like it's 38 degrees. So now we've got our angles and the next thing we want to get is the time difference between two consecutive readings. So this is a bit of a tricky calculation so I'll just show you how it goes. So our first two data readings were taken on June 26th at 9.48 a.m. and June 28th at 10.14 a.m. Now we want to calculate the time difference between these two points in time. Ideally, we'd like our final answer to be in days. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's look at the dates. So this is June 26th, June 28th. There were two days apart. So two days. But now we need to account for the fact that the two readings were not taken at the same time on the two different days. So this was 948, this was 1014. So 10 is a little bigger than 9, therefore we're going to add 1 hour due to this time difference. The fact that this went from 9 to 10 means we add 1 hour. However, as I said, remember we want our final answer to be in days. So we better convert this 1 hour into days. So that would be 24 hours in a day. So we just multiply by that. So 1 over 24 gives us this 1 hour converted into days. Now we need to take into account the fact that this was 48 minutes after the hour and this was only 14 minutes after the hour. So 48 is bigger than 14, that means we're going to need to subtract off whatever this difference is. So 48 minus 14 gives us 34 minutes. So over here we'll have 34 minutes, but again we want to convert this into days. So there are 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day. So now let's actually calculate out these quantities as decimals. So this is all going to be equal to 2 days plus 1 hour divided by 24 hours in a day gives us this number. 0.0417 and that'll be in days. Now we want to do this next term here so that'll be minus and we calculate 34 divided by 60 minutes in an hour divided by 24 hours in a day. Hit the equal sign and that gives me this value 0.0236 days. And now let's calculate what our final answer is for the time difference between these two points in time. So that will be 2 plus 0 0.0417 minus 0 0.0236. And that gives me my answer, 2.0181 days. And now that I've got that answer, I'll write it down here. So 2.0181 days. So that's the angle and the time difference between these two measurements. And now just to give you another chance to see that, I'll do it for the next two readings. So these two readings were taken on June 28th at 10.14 a.m. and June 30th at 9.40 a.m. And we want to calculate the time difference between those. So again, first we look at the dates, 28th, 30th, again it's two days apart and then we start to account for the actual time difference. So this was taken at 10 a.m., this was taken at 9 a.m. earlier, so I'll need to subtract one hour in this case, and again I'll divide by 24 hours per day. And then this was at 14 minutes after the hour, this was at 40 minutes after the hour, so in this case I need to add the difference between these. So 40 minus 14 gives me 26 minutes, so I'll have 26 minutes and again I want to convert that to days, so 60 minutes per hour and 24 hours per day. You type these into your calculator and you should get 2 days minus 0.0417 again days plus 0.0181 days which gives you this 1.9764 days and again I would then write this down and that would be the data for these two measurements and then you do it a third time to get the time difference between these ones which I have done now here. So now we're ready to calculate the rotation rate of the Sun. So how do we do that? Well we have an angle here and a time here so that's the difference between these two measurements. Now if we take a ratio of these two so T 
for the time, divided by the angle, 51 degrees, that ratio should be equal to the rotation rate of the sun, that is how long it takes the sun to rotate once, divided by 360 degrees. Capital T, that's what we're looking for, the rotation rate of the sun. So we can cross multiply this to solve for T. So I'll just do that quickly here. I multiply both sides of this expression by 360 degrees. These would cancel out and that leaves me with T all by itself equal to 360 degrees times little t, our time, divided by theta, our angle. So you would plug your two numbers in here and calculate a value for t. In this case, I've got three intervals between my four data sets, so I would have three t values, three capital T values, and then I would average them all together to get a more accurate value. So again, you're using this equation and your data points to calculate a rotation rate for the sun. You do that for each interval between your pairs of data points and you average all your capital T values together and then compare that to the known value of the rotation rate of the sun which is listed in your lab manual.